Romans 1, 19 to 21 says, For what can be known about God is plain to them, because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made. So they are without excuse. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts were darkened. Verse 32, though they know God's righteous decree that those who practice such things deserve to die, they not only do them, but give approval to those who practice them. The Apostle Paul used these verses of Scripture to begin to show that all people are under condemnation because they are without excuse before God, meaning that they know all the sins that they have committed deserve death because God made himself, his own character, and his righteous decree about uh, doing what is wrong deserves death, known to humanity by revealing it to us in the things that have been made. God's creation testifies to our liability to God's standard of righteousness. This video aims to prove the very specific point that Adam had the law as we continue in our series about covenant theology. As we continue to discuss the covenant of works here, we should remind ourselves that the Westminster Confession, chapter 7, paragraph 2, explains the first covenant made with man was a covenant of works, wherein life was promised to Adam and in him to his posterity, upon condition of perfect and personal obedience. Our point here in this video, very precisely, is that God gave the law to Adam. Our Westminster Confession, again, teaches this exact point in chapter 19, paragraph 1. God gave to Adam a law, as a covenant of works, by which he bound him and all his posterity to personal, entire, exact, and perpetual obedience, promised life upon the fulfilling, and threatened death upon the breach of it, and endued him with the power and ability to keep it. We now then turn to the biblical evidence that God gave a law to Adam. We saw already in Romans 1 that God made the world in such a way that we know him and his righteous decree through the creation itself, through what we call natural or general revelation, which, which simply means that, that we as sinners are without excuse before God as our judge when it comes to knowing what we should have done. Paul confirmed that point again in Romans 2, which holistically is about convicting the Jewish people about how their possession of God's written oracles— did not automatically secure their justification, their right standing with God. In fact, their possession of the written law rendered them beyond without excuse, since verse 13 says that it is not the hearers, but the doers of the law who will be justified. If we keep in mind, then, the difference between God's law built into creation from Romans 1 and the written law given to Israel, then Romans 2 verse 14 makes very clear sense, which I'll read, adding a word or two uh, to clarify the specific references. For when Gentiles, who do not have the written law, do by nature what the creation law requires, they are a law to themselves, even though they do not have the written law. So we see that there is a law of nature, a natural law, built into us as those made in God's image, 
which explains why all human beings are without excuse and know that those who break God's law are owed the death penalty. Romans 5, 12 to 14 further confirms this point in a more direct way in connection to Adam's role as our covenant head in the first covenant. These verses read, Therefore, just as sin came into the world through the one man, and death through sin, and so spread to all men because all sinned, for sin was in the world before the written law was given, but sin is not counted where there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. Three clear points from these verses show that Adam had the law. First, verse 12 simply says that death is the consequence of sin. Second, verse 13 then says that sin was in the world before the written law was given at Sinai, which I think is the clear meaning from if we consider the following reference to Moses in verse 14, but still verse 13 also says that sin is only counted when there is a law. Sin, which results in death, is the lack of conformity to or the breaking of God's law. We know then that Adam had the law because Paul said death results from sin. Adam certainly sinned. No one denies that. But sin requires a law. Adam then clearly possessed a law, uh, which we will see is a crucial feature of the covenant of works. We'll consider next what the content of this law given to Adam was. But for now, I believe the scripture is clear that Adam had the law.